I'm Mari Cartel, LifeScript.com, and I'm here at City of Hope, a comprehensive cancer treatment center in Duarte, California. I'm here because they're doing some interesting work in terms of stem cells and the, what it means for cancer research. Tell me a little bit about the, the neural stem cells. Now tell me exactly how this works. As adults, we have neural stem cells in parts of our brain. And from what I see in our preclinical models, when there's injury, they get psyched to multiply and move to the site of injury. So I thought if neural stem cells can go to these pathology areas, when a tumor invades, it's making um, damage. Would the stem cells follow the tumor cells? And we did some testing, and, it, and in fact, the stem cells will follow brain tumor cells all over the brain. And even when we put the stem cells on the opposite side of the brain, they crossed over the white matter tract specifically to the tumor sites. So we started expanding our experiments. Like what if we have metastasis in the brain, like several different tumors in the brain? And we injected the stem cells, and they localized to all the tumor sites. We have also found out that if we inject the stem cells intravenously, they will cross the blood-brain barrier. So now I have a vehicle, a cell that's a vehicle that can find invasive tumor cells throughout the body, in fact. So now the question is, what do I want to load it with? Let me load it with a payload so I can localize the therapy only to the tumor sites and spare the rest of the body. You're using it as a delivery system now? You're actually trying it as a delivery system to, to target the chemotherapy then? To the cancer cells. So now you don't have the chemotherapy going all through your body, and the chemo kills anything that's dividing. So that's why you lose your hair, you have trouble with your skin, your bone marrow. It's toxic to anything that's dividing, normal or tumor. It doesn't differentiate. In this case, because the stem cells are only at the tumor sites, now you have localized chemo production only at the tumor sites. So you give the prodrug, it converts to the chemo. You stop giving the prodrug, you stop making the chemo. And we're working on a second agent now that CIRM, a California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, funded us. Um, I was the first woman PI to get funded for this disease team. Um, we have a really wonderful lab, a wonderful team of people. So we are to take another therapy to the clinic next year um, where the patient gets irinotecan, which is another prodrug, and it's used for many different cancers. Where are we with this now? I mean, in terms of normalized treatments like this. Mm -hmm. It's still years down the road. Um, we have tight regulatory with the FDA uh, requirements, which I think are, are good, and they're very helpful to us in moving it along. I think we're most advanced in the glioma and the brain tumor, because that's where we already did a safety study and showed that the stem cells are safe. We also showed conversion of the prodrug to the drug in the brain locally, so we had proof of concept. The stem cells are definitely creating this drug at the tumor sites, which we were excited about. Um, we had evidence of migration. So um, now we move to the next step. So phase one is safety generally. Phase two, more expensive, more patients, more sites. Um, now you keep increasing the dose uh, and increase the treatment rounds. And let's see, can we get to a point where we're getting efficacy in the patient? Are we prolonging their life? Are we reducing the tumor? Um, so that's phase two, uh, maybe two to three years. It's a new possibility out there. And a lot of new ones will be coming down the line. I can, I can tell there's a lot of excitement in the field across the board. Treatment using these methods may be a ways away, but it certainly is hopeful. From City of Hope in Duarte, I'm Mari Cartel, and this is LifeScript.com.